Let's see. Hey, what's up, everybody? You ever wanted to just ignore everything? You ever wanted to just open up Netflix? I mean, I guess, I guess in this situation, you'd be chilling with yourself, probably. <laughs> you are Path of Exile players. Um, you ever wanted something that just felt so strong that you lost the motivation to even upgrade it? Yeah, this is a build for you. <laughs> uh, I've been reflecting on the upgrades that we've done for the past couple days and like really what I was going to do with this build and I'm at my limit I'm just I think I'm done <laughs> there's like maybe a t couple tiny tweaks that I'm gonna do but this build is so ridiculously strong that I don't I, I lost all motivation for wanting to upgrade it and I think that's a good thing I, I think it's good for having a ceiling on where you want to go and where you want to push a build but I didn't expect to hit it at this level. Now, granted, I am now at like the luxury level of investing quite a bit into this build. We are at the point now where talking about money, we're, we're, we're really in like a, uh, a post-currency discussion type of, of world when it comes to this build. Um, it's one of those things where like, if you have to ask, eh, you probably shouldn't be thinking about it anymore. Uh, this build was great at 60 exalts, and I would encourage you to do that if you're interested. But if you want to get something that is just, I don't even know, like I, I would just call it like the Rolls Royce, right? It's got a powerful engine. It's pretty quick. It's not like super nimble, right? You're not going to like brag about it to all your friends, but do you know your friends are going to be the ones begging you to, uh, you know, get chauffeured out with you to the club on the weekends or something in your car um, because that's how you roll up in style. And yeah, this is the overall, I'm sorry for that weird metaphor. <laughs> this is just straight up overall the strongest does whatever, it, it ignores everything in the game, does not care. I, I'm pretty sure I've never been tankier than this. Um, build in the entire game. Uh, like, you know, <laughs> the challenge right now is thinking about what I'm going to say as I'm playing the game. Like, it, what's happening on the screen doesn't really matter. I am just straight up holding down Cyclone on the keyboard, and what I'm doing with the mouse doesn't matter. I don't have to press a single button. Uh, you know, I can just stand here, kill a 60% Delirious T16 boss. Uh, we'll go back. <laughs> you know, it just, I can't die, right? I, I effectively can't die. If I die, I probably rolled something absolutely ridiculous. But um, that, that would just be a me problem. If you want to absolutely just Netflix and chill by yourself, play some of the hardest content in the game, never die, you know, outside of making a severe, severe error. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I'm not pressing a single button. <laughs> uh, this is the build for you. Um, I, I have never been tankier, especially with this much damage. I am nearly at 40 million DPS. I can ignore all of the content in the game and just do everything to the point where like the game is just trivial. <laughs> so let's quickly go over the upgrades I've done in the past couple days. Trying to decide which item I should start on. There are three big notable changes here and they've made all of the difference. We're gonna start with the biggest one and that is the grasping mail. So this is, is a very desired item right now. The key for us right now is the fact that it has that increased global defenses, especially the fact that it's fractured on this base. We are at the point. It is not worth talking about currency. This base alone, I don't even know, 780, 90 exalts. Especially, I hit that tailoring orb. I actually hit it on the second tailoring orb. I got very, very lucky. Their tailoring orbs are like five to seven exalts right now. We got that increased defense modifiers since we are scaling both energy shield and armor, and they kind of both feed into each other in terms of strength particularly because we're using Divine Shield here. We get more recovery of our energy shield based on our armor, Don't and fall. we get more replenishing based on our armor when we block because of Aegis Aurora. The more armor we can get in, in conjunction with the more energy shield that we can get, 
the better. Since we have a ton of armor from our flasks, especially because we can use the mage blood, those are always active. I have 90,000 armor and it goes up to like 95,000 when I have all, all my aura stacks and everything. I drop my banner, stuff like that. Let's see, 9333 times 0.02. I get 1800 energy shield back every time I block. I have max block and spell block. So obviously ridiculous, right? So yeah, Grasping Mail, very, very expensive, ridiculously strong. Since Forbidden Right does more damage based on how much energy shield and life we have by getting 2000 more energy shield by just getting the Grasping Mail, we get more flat damage on our Forbidden Right. Now we do lose the plus two level of all gems. Uh, by losing the skin of the lords and we lose that keystone. Unfortunately, we can't do like the glancing blows set up where, you know, I was using the impossible escape to take these and get the max cold res. Uh, I did have to go back to max cold res on my gloves. Just really, really good. Ideally, we could transfer this onto a Val Regalia and then get even more energy shield. But I actually really like the amount of armor that we get here. I think that's pretty comfortable. And I do not have the, the balls to transfer that with a Recombinator. <laughs> you know, this base being 70 plus exalts, I just, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to transfer that to a Valragalia. Not to mention 600 flat armor is really nice. In addition to that, we crafted it with Essences of Loathing to get the increased mana reservation of skills on there. That in conjunction, yes, I got an Ashes of Stars as well. Basically necessary for taking this build to the next level. This allows us to, with a second Enlighten, yes, this is the luxury high investment level of the build, with a second Enlighten level four, now we can add Zealotry into the build. Specifically, Anomalous Zealotry, plus five crit multi. Then we want to also switch to an anomalous assassin's mark. Cursed enemies take 10% increased damage. All of that is because of 30% quality from the Ashes of the Stars. So yeah, all of that together, 2000 plus more energy shield, more discipline effect. We want more non-curse aura effect, more reservation efficiency. We get Zealotry in here. We get 90,000 armor. All of that together just makes this character even stronger. And then the other big change here was this dagger. And uh, in the full build guide, I definitely, I'll be putting all of the crafting instructions. The really nice thing about this craft is I actually didn't want tier zero attack speed, which is from the deafening essence of zeal. That actually would have given me 30% attack speed, which would put me over the cooldown recovery breakpoint. With my gear setup, my attack speed is exactly what I want it to be. Now I could shed the attack speed as a suffix on my gloves and get more on the dagger. But since I'm at exactly 10.1, I didn't want to mess with that number. So I was able to craft with Shrieking Essences of Zeal, which actually you could buy in bulk at less than one chaos per. I was able to spam it until I hit double tier two crit multi and tier two crit chance. Ideally, those would be tier one, of course, but that was great. Like I was very, very happy with that. Then I did suffixes can't be changed, used a veiled chaos orb, unveiled spell damage, which this is okay. This is not the best one. I may continue to do that until I hit the spell damage and mana regen, which I think goes up to 79% damage. So I could get a little bit more there if I kept doing that, but it's two exalts per try. So I don't really want to do that. I'm not going to go into extreme detail here. There were a couple tweaks here and there to like really make things work. Like I need a level six awaken cast on crit to hit the CDR breakpoint. You could use an abyss jewel. Uh, instead if you want to do that. All things told, at the end of the day, insane DPS. I think this is like the third highest DPS I've ever done in Path of Exile. I usually don't go for, you know, Giga Chad one-shot boss DPS. Hopefully that was pretty clear in the demonstration at the beginning, how ridiculous this DPS is. The effective hit point pool is infinite because 75% block, getting uh, 1800 energy shield back on hit. You can literally go AFK in wave 25 of a simulacrum, go get your coffee, you know, go heat up a slice of pizza, come back, and your character is still alive. And in fact, the uh, the blocking with Tempest Shield may actually kill some monsters <laughs> as you're going AFK. It is that strong both offensively and defensively. You have permanent 140% movement speed. Like I said, this is like a Rolls Royce or a Bentley or something like that, right? It's zippy-ish, but you know, you're cycloning around. You're not going warp speed. It's not as fast as a bow build. It doesn't scale as well as a Fizz to Ellie build in terms of like insane damage for, you know, group play, 100% Delirious. But I was doing Tropical Island runs and getting 300 Simulacrum Splinters. I was doing group carries on stream last week. Speaking of which, you know, definitely join the stream this week. We're going to be doing challenge carries with chat and the community to try to help people get closer to their 40 out of 40 or whatever their goal is. Definitely join on that if you're interested. This build really just basically does it all. If you just want to do the content quickly, 
efficiently. If you want to basically ignore the concept of death entirely, except for the death that you're causing your enemies, this is the build. I have straight up hit the ceiling for any investment that I want to put into it beyond this. I'm going to tweak a couple items a little bit, but I'm done. I am very happy with this. Build guide will be coming a little bit later this week. Not much more to say than that. <laughs> it's a beautiful build. I, I'm really in love with it. I'm so happy that I played it. But yeah, anyway, I just want to keep this kind of short and sweet. This is my uh, my little update. Thorough build guide will be coming later this week. I'm going to go get ready for the stream, and I'm going to leave you with the Uber Cirrus uh, very, very quick kill from last night. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Mercury, Mercury is not in retrograde. Is he gonna do his move? Oh, ho, 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 ho. I killed him so quickly. He didn't know what to do.